I have been scratching my head on how to do this crazy axe handle head. If you're joining us from the first time here, we've got a Marbles number no. five, a pocket axe that has a very unusual eye. Been drilled out there in a drill press. So making that handle, apparently, I'm, I'm assuming that they had sort of some sort of an, an automated tool of some sort with spinning blades or something, and then they would just run the handles in like a pencil sharpener, you know, type of thing. But I don't, I don't have that last time I checked. So it comes basically, it's coming down to carving this out by hand. I tried to think of lots of different ways. Here's a couple of methods I was going to share with you. I thought that I really had it figured out. I had this eureka moment in the middle of the night and I woke up. So I do stew about these things until I, and I don't, what, if I don't have a solution to something, I, I think about it all the time until I, until I do have a solution. So I thought right here, these are the, these are the, these are the uh, cutting irons for my number 50 Stanley beading plane. This is for making um, like beadboard, you know, decorative type of things. And I have a full set here and I thought, oh, that's going to be perfect. It's going to be the perfect tool. And I, I grabbed this one, which is a, what does that say there? Seven sixteenths. I think I've got a half inch around here somewhere as well. And I grabbed this and I lined it up and I looked at this and I thought, oh, look at that wasn't this one, it was this half inch or one, but it was perfect. This, whoever did this, it looks like they used a half inch bit. So we use this for, so I thought, well, all we're gonna have to do here is just go along, right? Go along in here and, and make those, make those uh, even, I was gonna make a tool for this. So I was gonna make a handle and chisel that out, you know, so I had a nice round handle on it, you know, so we could use it for different things. And, but the problem with that, and that's not gonna work at all, you can see there I started without you. We'll, we'll talk about here this in a minute here. The problem with that is that these don't come down to points. You see they've got little flat edges there for details and we don't have any 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 flat spots on this. And so what I what what it would, was doing is it spaced it out too far. So I mean you can I think you can kind of see it's just it's not going to work. It just as the Germans say not possible. It's not possible. There's always a lot of not possible when I go there. So then I thought um how about this? How about the, I'm trying to incorporate these. Here's the, here's the number Stanley one, the, the number Stanley 71, the router plane, hand router. And it have, it, I have three bits for it. I've got this, look at this one here. It's got a, see it's got a point on it, pointy. The other ones are, oh, I got them here. The other ones are just for, just chisel grinds. There's this one here. Right there, and this one, those are, those are not, not helpful. But this one is helpful. And, and even though it, it's not, you know, it's not ideal because we have, it's a V and we need round, but it does kind of get you going in the right direction, right? But hooking it in the tool was impractical because I couldn't get the angle, but it does have enough, enough of a handle on it that it actually works pretty good. To kind of get in there, this is not where I started, but to kind of get in there and to, and to clean things up a little bit. Pull some of that out, actually, actually works really good. So what I finally just ended up doing was just using my tiny eighth inch chisel and just doing everything by hand. And which we're gonna do, we'll do the other side together. But as you can see, if we look up close there, let me bring you in here, focus. Oh, everything's backwards. My mind does not work that way. Focus here. There we go. As you can see here, um, it's pretty good. You know, for doing it freehand, it's not, you know, we'll see here soon enough if it fits in the head, but I think, I think it will. And having the spray paint on there to get that profile really helped. So we've got the other side. And so I'll show you the process that I use to do it. And maybe if you decide to do one of these, it'll, it might be helpful. So let's, uh, we'll go through the whole thing. We'll do it, do it together. Oh, so warning anyone who, yeah, I, I, I don't know how many times I have to say, say this, um, cause I, I keep, I keep getting the same question over and over again is, is people complaining about these videos, um, like they want, oh, get to the point, get to the point. This is taking too long. You know, and one guy said, and I thought yeah, it's just a mean comments. So and one guy said something like, it's a good thing you don't do this for money. Cause you certainly wouldn't make any money. Um, no, I think you're missing the point. The point isn't about that. There's lots of channels that will do fast forward motion and you can see the whole project. If 
but it's not, I don't, I don't do that. Uh, I came out in the video yesterday, um, and I'm not going to get into a rant, is it? but I, I do want to explain my position. Uh, I came out yesterday and I had uh, an hour uh, to work on the handle. I have lots of other things to do around the homestead, and, and I shared with you that one hour. Right? That's, um, that's, that's the way I do it. That's the way I want to do it. So um, if it's too slow for you, as, you know, the recommendation is I put these in a playlist and you can come back um, and watch them all together or at double speed or, or whatever, but um, that's the way it is, the way it is. All right, let's get back on the positive here. All right, so how I did this may or may not be the best way to do it is I used my small combination square, maintained the setting from the other side there, and I just, I'm drawing a line there to the bottom of the, the valley. The bottom of the valley there bottom of the trough there so it gives us some reference there because it's hard to get reference on here and, and spray painting that on there is really helpful and the same thing over here and you can see i've already got these lines here because i didn't push the record button so we get to do it again together right there this side as well i have maintained here a straight edge um so i have i'm following kind of the contour of the head there but it just is given us something to work with there that's a chisel against, um, and I think that that will work really good. Okay, so you can see there, and you can start to see what's going on there. All right, so let's uh, let's um, put this in the vise. Since we're, it's a very light touch. This is a very delicate, kind of a delicate operation. Um, the vise is sufficient. So I'm just kind of coming back to where that that paint stops there and I'm kind of trying to make a make it round the thing with this stuff is you just can't get in any hurry I can't see any other way to do it I've not seen anyone on the internet who has uh, posted anything about doing a handle like this I was hoping for some uh, some pointers. And then I'll come over there on the other side, and about a sixteenth of an inch or so, just to kind of see that shadow from that paint line. And just go light, and just remove this piece here. Never worked with on a chisel or on hickory with a chisel before. It's a very interesting wood. It's very strainy. And then at this at this end here, I'm coming to at to a point and severing the severing those membranes like that. Coming off that point there. Because that's going to be exposed. Let's see if we can remove that. Hickory, an interesting wood, so different than boy, it's tough. That looks pretty good right there, doesn't it? Now, what I did was uh, it's the first time I've ever used that little eighth inch chisel. Now, what I was doing was um, actually, was this is kind of backwards that I have to do it because the camera's in the way, but yeah, it's not going to work. Is, is dragging this in there. And kind of cleaning, kind of cleaning that up a little bit. It's tedious, but it, you know it doesn't take for. I mean, I don't. In what I have, maybe 10, 15 minutes into the other side there. I mean, it's not. It's not a big deal. I, mean, I think you know all. It, time I, I was, I'd waste and tried to figure out a more like a mechanical way to do it. I should have just grabbed my chisel and just start, start doing it. What else, what else are you going to do, right? So I've got a, well, I've got something I can share with you, probably. Probably not supposed to. I don't care. I don't answer to anyone, so. So, uh, Gerber Knives, they contacted me, and they said, um, I don't know how much I can divulge here. They said, well, I'll just say that we we got we we want to 
this is how I understood it. This is how it was explained to me. And we'll, we'll find out if this, if this is the case or not. But they said, um, we want to, uh, we're making, we're, we want to kind of maybe change our image a little bit. Or I don't know if it's that so much as that is, we, we want to produce some good knives again. Some really high quality knives, you know. I don't know, maybe something in the line of Benchmade. I don't know, I, I don't know yet, but we're, we're going to find out. And so they said, we're, we're going to roll these new knives out and um, we'd very much like it, you know, uh, if you would um, come out and see our factory. And we want to show, kind of show what we got going on and everything. And I said, you know, I don't, I, 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 I get these offers uh, um, almost daily and I don't, I don't do, necessarily do them. Uh, I don't do hardly any of them. Um, but this one I agreed to do um, for a couple reasons. Um, any of you who follow the channel for any time, you know that, that I grew up, I, I was a huge Gerber fan. I mean, I'll tell you what, back in the day, when I was in grade school, high school, I mean, Gerber, that was the thing. They were the finest knives you could make. And my grandfather, he was a, he was a Gerber, definitely a Gerber man. I mean, he had the A400 Hunter, the original one, which I have today, which which is I'll bring with me. I, I wanted to show I've got my hunting, granddad's hunting knife that he bought in the 50s. And I've got the, the one that I got when I t turned 18. Mine's the A400 Hunter that uh, my friend, I sent over to my friend, the Apostle P. He sharpened it for me. And man, they were, I mean, they were the finest knives. They had the hard steel and, and they were expensive. Granddad, I mean, he... He was a Gerber man, I'll tell you what, through and through. He really liked him. He even, he liked Gerber so much that that's what he bought my parents for their wedding gift, Gerber kitchen knives, which we still have today. So um, so I responded back and, and I said, um, I'll be happy to do it, um, but I want you to know that I'm going to be uh, completely frank. Uh, with, with what what I see and, and what my opinion is and if they're good I'll say they're good and if they're if they're not good I'll say as much as well you know and, and as I I, mean, I guess my concern was I said you know I don't want to I don't want to come and see the factory if it were if it's going to be you know a, you know something on the line of that like the Bear Grylls type of uh, knives that they sell at, at Walmart uh, and big box stores and stuff you know and there's a there's a place for those. I mean, not everyone's got hundreds of dollars to spend on a knife. I get that. I, I don't. That's, I don't have a problem uh, with that. But um, what I was, what I'm hoping to see is to is that they're getting back to um, what they used to be in regards of, you know, the finest knife manufacturer in the world. I mean, my A400 Hunter that I'll I'll take and I'll show you. Um, I believe that was designed by um, Almar. You know the famous Almar knives. It's a, it's a, it's a fabulous knife, and their sheaths were so good. I've got the original sheath, but uh, that's coming up here soon. That we're gonna, the whole family will be going up there and and doing that. And I, you know, I've done, I've done this before, and what I was kind of thinking of maybe doing is, um, is hiring um, a videographer or or a cam more of a cameraman. Uh, that way I could um, kind of, you know, be, be open to ask questions and, and really enjoy the tour and see what's going on and the manufacturing process, which is so interesting, and not be worried about trying to get the footage. So I'm going to I'm gonna call my, or send an email to my friend Alan, who's a, he's a photographer, he knows, he probably can recommend someone like that, uh, that could do that. Well, I guess maybe... If you live in the, you know, Gerber's in Portland, we're going to be traveling to Portland to do this. But if you, uh, if you have that, those type of skills and you want to um, participate in that, um, send me a message. I don't have anyone picked out yet. And it's just, it's just an idea to saw something that I thought I might like to do. Well, that's looking pretty good, huh? That's looking really good. What do you think of that? We got still got some stuff to we got some to come down there. Oh man, look at that. look what I did. That's okay. I'll fix it. But you can see, 
right there. I came down a little further on one side than the other. I, I, the X is going to go down further than that. This is just kind of a, this is just kind of a trial and error here. So this is quite a fun project. I'm actually really enjoying myself here. So I left the, the tops there a little bit proud. Um, and so I'll pull those down now. Remember, if we go too far, it'll be too late there, so we can always take away, but we can't add. All right, so let's kind of see what's going on here with the, with the fit. We're getting cl really close there. Flip it over. How are we looking there? We're still... Still proud on that side there, aren't we? I love that plastic clamp, man. I'll tell you what. I think I'd be doing that if that was a metal clamp. Not in your life. Best clamp I ever had. All right, so let's see about fitting the head here. So you can see, here's the profile. Right there. All done by hand. A lot of just tedious. You know, it hasn't really actually hasn't been that bad. So we'll fit in here. You can see it's going in there. What we got here. All right, let's see how, see how we did here. There we go. Oh, boy, we're, we're getting close there. I can show you here. Not too, probably what, about five sixteenths, quarter inch from coming out the other end. How are we looking here? Got plenty, and this is really starting to tell us, you know, where we're dragging. You can see when we start seeing little shavings come up there. Hmm, that's interesting. Interesting. So you can see how far we went close, you know, I mean, it went to right there. It's always the hardest part, the last little bit. We want it to be tight. We want it to be sit tight on that shoulder. I don't see, we're not, I can see, you can see, you really have to look in, at those black marks there. It's going to show you where you're rubbing. We're just gonna have, I'm just gonna have to keep working that back a little bit. We're, we're, we're hitting it pretty hard right here. And I did bring these valleys back a little bit. But boy, do I dare put a wedge in this, you know, wedging this thing, it makes me, uh, I don't know how that's gonna happen. I'm certainly not gonna put a metal wedge in there. We'll have to just put a, a very, very small wet wood wedge in there because, boy, we're not talking about, there's just no material there. It's so little. So little. Hmm. We'll just keep carrying on here. So I'm going to cut my kerf now because I, I fear that the next time I fit it, it'll be done and I won't, I won't need to, um, I don't want to take it off again. I run the risk of breaking something. Um, I'll have the kerf in it now. So I gotta use a saw that's really thin. I've got two thin saws. I've got this little one, this little Irwin, but it's too thin, I think. But I got my, my Veritas here, and that's thin too. And I think that's okay. Now, we're just gonna, let's, let's make it, just guess in there. Okay, committed now.
it's delicate, delicate, delicate. <laughs> Now we don't want to go any deeper than our with our kerf than our head. We're at no risk of that right now. And we also don't want to bottom out. So go a little bit more. further. This saw doesn't have any set in it, so or very little, so it's binding a bit. Okay, I think that's reaching our breaking point there. That's as far as I'm going to go. That's it. Oh no, he did it again. An axe handle cliffhanger? Say it isn't so. Well, that's all I had time. I, we had to go in and, well, there we, we had a little accident on the homestead. I had a, a friend of mine, Joel, he uh, restored a, a really nice uh, underbuck. And it's got kind of a sharp edge on it. And so uh, I had it in the shop in a, on kind of at a low, about leg level and sitting on top of a box. And Jack went by and it just laid his, it, just, it cut him. It laid his, uh, laid his leg open. And so we had a little medical emergency, and uh, that wasn't that bad. I got him all stitched up together home, at, or stitched back together at home, and, and he's healing just fine, and he's out running around. So uh, so that put the end, put, put kind of a squash on that whole axe handle video. Speaking of Jack, oh, I'm so proud of that boy. I was, uh, you know, he's doing his, running his own channel now, and uh, under heavy supervision, running his own channel, uh, but he does all, everything himself, uh, comes up with the idea and the shooting, and he's, he's actually doing a really good, great job, but I got uh, in my uh, YouTube, my subscriber feed this morning, I saw that his video was posted, and I watched it, and I didn't really know what it was about or what he was doing, he did such a nice job, and, and I think you'll enjoy it, I've got a little bit of it playing here, um, as I was watching it, I, it just it dawned on me the importance of, um, I guess, maybe rite of passage. There's been a lot of talk of that in recent years and several books done on it. And rightfully so, because I think it's so important. It's so important. I mean, we have, uh, you know, I think we have a real problem with, uh, I don't know, with man boys in this world. And I'm not saying that to be derogatory to them. It's just that it, they're, they've been put in a tough spot. I mean, you've seen them around, they're 30, 35, you know, and they're, you know, still dressing like teenagers and skateboards and hats backwards and all those things. And I'm not, say, I'm not saying that's always the case, but, but it is a lot of the time because, you know, I, I hear, I hear this. I mean, I received the letters, hundreds, if not thousands of them, of, um, of young men that are in this situation that, that have not yet made that transition from boyhood into manhood. They've never had someone in their life or a mentor or a strong figure that told them, you know, now you, you've become a man now. It's time for you to put away those things. And, and th you know, that, 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 those of us with children, I think, is, it's so important. And um, things like this so that, I featured in the, that Jack featured in the video of the sword fighting and the, sword, and the training that we do. It, oh, someone's calling. Sorry, you can't, I can't talk to you right now. It's important because... Um, you know, there'll come a time where, you know, we have this game, Jack and I, or this thing that I've developed, you know, and Jack started, you know, his sword fighting and he, he ha is interested in this and, and he has to make achievements and, you know, acts of bravery he has to perform and different things. And, and ultimately there'll come a time, you know, when he's in what I determined when that time will be when he will move on and, and, and achieve something. And, and this is just a small part, you know, a facet of, of a multi faceted approach to this type of thing but uh you know i have several things in mind you know different things like when he gets his first hunting rifle and we go hunting you know that's that for me was a big moment and i have a, a mountain um to the several hours to the south here that is i wouldn't say it's dangerous but it's a little scary uh it's very steep and very pointed and it's quite an accomplishment to climb it and that's something that uh, you know and make sure that i've been talking to him about and we've decided uh, mrs w you know we we want to leave Jack equipped with 
with a few skills uh, before he, he he leaves you know because it's once he's gone he's on his own and the world is tough and so what could we equip him with so we we said jack you're going to uh know how to fly a plane you have a pilot's license ride a horse speak a second language and be good at math and that's what we can that's what we can offer you and uh, you will uh, hopefully it'll serve you well so i put a link uh, to jack's video i really encourage you to watch it and do it as a favor to me he uh, has worked hard on these and and uh, we're just really proud of them and i think this video will enjoy it you'll enjoy it and i'm not suggesting it strictly because he's my son but uh, because it is a it is a great video so thanks for watching guys and we'll we'll see you in the next video